you're watching politics today just tell you that in Bauchi state earlier today uh, there was a bomb blast and we understand that quite a number of people lost their life the report we're getting is that uh, 10 persons actually died in the bomb blast at Tafar Balio local government area and among the dead we understand the two soldiers and and some youths uh, we we we're still waiting I mean there are still developments on that and earlier also today we understand that the police uh, commissioner in um, Bauchi State, that uh, Ike Chikwaduga has come out to confirm that there was also a bomb blast uh, at some churches. And no, not, not bomb, yeah, bomb blast at some churches, actually, but the churches were not affected. But the fence of this, um, the, the main fence of the church, that's the perimeter fence of the church, was uh, badly affected. No casualty at all. Nobody died. In Kano State, we do not have the exact number of the casualty. We're still waiting. Um, for the authorities now to come out with the exact number of casualty and i told you the other day that um in um in 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 bielsa state actually there was an explosion there a bridge was actually affected and today we received a report not quite long ago from our correspondent in bielsa state who said uh, there was also another gun attack earlier today at uh, olubobiri and that a policeman and an ex-militant um were, were actually killed well, we're still waiting for updates on that but um, the security situation in the country now is very very troubling no doubt at all do not forget in the blast uh, in kano state one of our correspondents very hard working correspondents and then Kogu lost his life in in that incident and so we, let's start with that i'm now being joined on the program by uh, mr nyekachu bani who is a public affairs analyst and also a lawyer we are expecting that uh, in the course of the program we'll be joined by some other guests uh, for now uh, Mr. Obani, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you, Securing Deji. Nigeria, not, not an easy thing at this point in time. You look at what happened in Kano State. Uh, mm -hmm. Give us your thoughts on, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Kano bombings and, and uh, you know, the series of bombings now we've been having. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Deji, uh, Nigerians will say it's no longer a laughing matter. Uh, the irregularity and then the maximum infliction of damage uh, both to lives and property. You know, the one that took place in Kano, I think this is the highest. You know, the, the conflicting report uh, we are receiving, some say 150 uh, persons uh, died in that particular mm -hmm. bomb blast. Some other say uh, 160 something. Even though the official report from the police are here is seven, uh, seven persons, yeah. they say died and all that. But I tell you, uh, Nigerians are, are becoming very scared uh, because of the fact that the government uh, said earlier on that they are on top of the situation and they will bring this, uh, they will nip this in the board. Now, if they promise to nip this in board, the board and then this thing is happening in such a manner that the bomb blast that took place spontaneously, uh, I think six at a time, and they were targeted at security agencies, uh, this, the police, the SSS, immigration. and then the immigration and all that. Uh, if they could penetrate so easily and then carry uh, such a maximum uh, damage uh, to the properties and lives of those security agencies, then who is safe in Nigeria? You and I, we don't have guns and all no. that. These are security agencies that they carry guns, and they, uh, they are supposed to be afraid of, uh, they're supposed to be afraid of those agencies. And they went there with ease and with spontaneous uh, uh, bombing. At the same time, six. So Nigerians are beginning to ask questions. What is going on? Well, because we want to understand even what is the mindset of the sect. What are they actually after? Is this political now? Is it religious? Or are they after the security agencies? I, I mean, you, they, they, they you, you, you so. take a look at the coordinated attacks mm. in Cairo yes. mm. that basically mm. the, the target security aid. Mm. Would you say, you know, our security agencies are becoming overwhelmed by this problem? And um, it's, it's quite surprising that they would attack, for instance, the zonal headquarters of the police and yes. find they attacked uh, are not the national headquarters mm. of the police some time mm. ago in Abuja. But, mm. you know, after that incident, a lot of people thought, well, that by now the police ought to have known or mm. at least, you know, the police mm. should have gotten itself prepared mm. now mm. for any kind of eventuality. Exactly. And for the first time, we're seeing an attack happening in the northwest of the country. Yeah, that, that, that again is scary because it used to be northeast. And now if they're now coming down to northwest, and they did it in such a coordinated manner that uh, six security agencies were attacked at the same time uh, with ease because it looks, it looks at that way. And then you are talking about the figures uh, of lives that are involved and all that. I think I tell you at this point in time that the only explanation would be that probably uh, proper security measures were not in place, uh, put in place to check this. 
because uh, the na national headquarters of police was, you know, bomb. Even with the things you hear in Iraq and uh, Afghanistan, I have never heard the, 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 the terrorists bombing the headquarters of any security agencies there. It is uh, an actual mosque and all the uh, private properties and all that. But this, they took the war to the national headquarters of the police force. And I felt that by now they would take extra measure. Though I've been to police stations where they take extra measure, cars are not being allowed inside and all that. Uh, I thought by now every police formation in this country would take extra uh, measure, security measure, to ensure that the, the embarrassment uh, that took place at the national uh, the head office will not repeat itself in other offices and all that. But the regularity, the coordinated one, and then the ease, and then the success. The success of these attacks, success, uh -huh, yes, because yes. success is now, you know, you know, speaks volume and it's, uh, it has become embarrassing. And I don't know the explanation the police force will have over this. So th we need we need to have explanation from them. What is going on? Is it that this uh, they have been overwhelmed by this uh, Boko Haram sect? Are, are we beginning to look forward to us probably getting well, a foreign, foreign intervention and all that? Is it that we can't handle it internally? So these are and, issues. And, and talking about foreign intervention mm. now, that's what some people have been talking about uh, the past few days now. Mm. And uh, w would it be proper, you're a lawyer now, mm. would it be proper to, to be seeking foreign intervention? I mean, w w with the kind of problem we're confronting. Yeah, we, we are a sovereign nation, actually. But there is nothing wrong in sharing information if you have a problem and the, that problem seems to be overwhelming and then you have interest of protecting lives and properties in your country, getting information, getting help, what you call technical support or assistance uh, from a developed economy that will help you nip whatever problem you're having in the world. I don't think it, uh, it offends uh, uh, the rules of sovereignty. It does not. You know, but the, the point is that what is the central objective? Are you compromising your security and arrangement within your uh, polity? No. Are you doing this in order to get support to, to, to tackle a problem that is uh, uh, looking intractable and uh, seemingly overwhelming? If you do that in order to get results, I don't think Nigerians will complain. But the point is this. Are we saying, are the, has the police come out to tell us that they are overwhelmed? Because every time these things happen, they keep on telling us that they are on top. You know, when you say you're on top, you must be seen to be on top. We're not seeing anything being on top whatsoever in this situation where these guys carry out these coordinated attacks with so much ease and regularity and then afflicting maximum damage. The rate of successes, you know, that is, that is very scary. It has never happened six at, at a time. And, and mm -hmm. apart from that, I mean, you look at what happened in Kano State, yes. 24 hours later. Then in, in, now Bauchi. in Bauchi, now Bauchi was where they started. Remember, it was, they killed the, the, the you, you coppers, you know, that, you know, conducted the election in mm -hmm. 2011 there in Bauchi. And then uh, from Bauchi, they shifted to Bono, you know, Yobe. You know, Yobe to Borno and all that. Most states in the Northeast have been affected. And then now shifting towards Abuja and then and all that. Now going back again immediately after this means that these guys uh, must have their recruits all over the country then. Now, if you ask me, there may be no state that is spared. You know, maybe, you could, know, could, unless could, this could is maybe say, the board. Could, could we say they yes. were sending a message? Yes. You know, by attacking in Kano. Yeah, uh, could we say they were sending a message that, look, we, we could strike anywhere? That is the point. So what they're trying to tell you is that they're everywhere now. Uh, somebody even called me and, you know, and told me something about you know, Lagos and other states and all that. They have recruits. You know? So we need to be very, very careful. If they could do this in Kano, and then the following 24 hours later, they did, they did it in Baochi. They went back to Baochi. So it's like they're everywhere there. We're still mm -hmm. talking about Baochi. Let me just bring you up to date with uh, the reports we received from our correspondent who uh, is there. He says uh, no fewer than 11 people were reported dead in the Sunday morning attack at Tafa Balewa local government area of Bochi State. That's not East Nigeria. Uh, by yet to be identified gunmen, could you include two soldiers? I, I told you about that. that Two soldiers were killed and the divisional police officer and eight unidentified youths in the local government area. About, that's Bauchi State. The state commissioner, Ikechiko Adubawa, confirming the incident also affirmed that uh, there were three bomb blasts at two worship centers in Bauchi Metropolis early Sunday morning with no casualties. But the perimeter fence and structure of churches, that's the churches, were partially damaged. However, there are conflicting reports on the motives of the attack on in Tafabalewa local government area. That while the police are claiming that the attack was a robbery attack by men of the underworld attempting to rob a bank and were foiled by security agents, youths in the area say it was just an attack on the residents. That in the meantime, investigations into the case by the police has revealed that 10, 10, 10 unexploded improvised explosive devices were recovered at the scene of the crime and six persons have been arrested by security agents in connection 
with the attack and are currently helping the police to tidy up investigation. That's, uh, I mean, the recovery of this mm. improvised device mm. and now the police coming out mm. to say, well, it was a robbery attack. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. What, what do you make of that? Sometimes they, when the police give explanation to certain things that happen, especially when there are security lapses, you know, sometimes they think they are, are they talking to people who don't understand? You know, uh, I don't think that is a proper explanation. Remember that there was a particular time there was a bomb blast uh, where bombs were thrown into a particular uh, people that were selling, either in Kano or in Kaduna, somewhere in Kaduna. And then people were saying that these things were bomb thrown onto their stores and they were all blown up. And people died, several people died. And police came up with the explanation that they were armed robber. You know, this issue of armed robbery and that, that there's nobody that would have thrown bomb and all that in, onto the uh, this and all. Those explanations are not pl you know plausible. Now, if things like this happen, we need to find a solution to it, and we should be given an explanation that is very satisfactory that makes people to feel that we are really you know safe. Because if police begin to give explanations like this, then you get scared yourself because you don't have a gun. I don't have a gun. You don't have any. In fact, today, this issue of security uh, problem, you know, is, was a prayer point in my church. We had to pray for Nigeria. Who are those that want this country to disintegrate? And even if we must part, must we part in such a manner? Can't we sit down and decide this issue? Now, can't we, can we even know what are the issues, you know, that this Boko Haram, uh, this Boko Haram people said? What are they demanding for? If they're asking for Islamization of the entire north, is it not a thing that can be discussed at the, on the round table and agreed upon? If Nigerians want it to be done that way, we can agree. We don't need to start killing lives, you know, wasting lives and properties. I think it's becoming unbearable, and something has to be done fast. Well, because Nigerians don't feel safe in the light of what is going on. Now, another mm. thing, the mm. fact is, whether you like it or not, mm. people are asking questions mm. of the president. Mm. People are saying, what is the president going to do? What mm. is he doing about this? Mm. Of course, you know, the president has come out to, to issue some very strong statements mm. saying, well, we're going to go after those people, we're going to get them. But mm. we, we've had that in the past. Mm. But... What would you be expecting the mm. president to do at this yeah. time? What kind of action yes. would you expect the president to take? You know, I, I, everyone will be looking at the lips, you know, of the president. The, the, the statements he makes at this point in time becomes very, very important. If the president comes up with a statement that shows that they are really on top and they are doing something in order to nip it in the board, Nigerians will be very happy. But if you start hearing statements that, look, Boko Haram has infiltrated my government, that even the executive and judiciary and all that, then you get more scared. When you have such a statement. Now, you get more scared when the president said initially that he isn't a lamb. I mean, he isn't a lion. Because this is the time we need a lion. Uh, actually, he displayed being a lion in Lagos recently. You know, you see that day he ordered workers back to work. That is how a lion talks. He said, Labour, I order you back to work. And Nigeria went back to work. And I said, you know, on, on the radio program, I said, I, I wish that this lion spirit that has suddenly been discovered in the presidency will now be used in tackling even Boko Haram issue. Even all the infrastructural decay we're having in this nation, we need a lion. We don't need any lamp in this matter because this country is a very complex nation. If you must be the president of this country, you must understand the complexities of this nation. You must understand the problems of this nation and you must have a lion heart. And you must maintain a spirit of a tiger. And when you t say things, they must be obeyed and in accordance with the law. So if the president is now a lion, which I believe he should be in this circumstance, let him now handle all problems with a lion heart. With a lion spirit, not a lamb, because at this point in time, it doesn't require a lamb to handle these problems. You know, especially this Boko Haram said, we need a lion to say, look, this must must stop. Deploy all the military that you brought to Lagos, take them to all those places, and make sure that they need this in the board. And then Nigerians will be safe. One other yes. issue I want you to react to. I mean, just a couple. And in addition to prayer, we need to also to pray because God needs to help us in this nation. Prayer is very critical. Yes. In a, in a, you know, one other thing. Just just a couple of days uh, ago, so sometime last week or earlier early in the week. Uh, it was reported that uh, the, 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 the suspected mastermind of the Madala bombing was, was arrested by the police. And, uh, you know, 24 hours later or so, the story was that this man has escaped and all of that. And, and funny enough, what we've been told by the police, well, we were later told that the president has uh, given a marching order to the inspector general of police. And um, now what we have been told is that a panel has actually been set up to investigate the circumstance yes. leading to... The, the, the escape of, yes. of that individual. Yes. I mean, what do you make of that? <laughs> now, if the president issued a query to the IG within 24 hours uh, to give an explanation as to what happened, I think by now something should be said by the presidency. Whether they accepted the explanation of the IG or whether the IG will still remain there. Because I tell you, uh, it is the most embarrassing story I ever heard. You know, and Nigerians will tell you, tell me another story. There are stories you don't want to hear. That you got a man that is a high-profile felon 
you know, and I heard that he, where he was lodged in government, uh, governor's lodge and all that in, in, in Abuja, the, the people that stormed to arrest him were many properly armed. They got him when, you know, where he was sleeping there. Now you now release him to a commission of police who now gave order to few men to go and search his house. How armed were they? Who informed those boys even in that environment that they were coming to search his house, that they got prepared and got him released? Was he handcuffed? And how did they in any way, you know, the center go, the handcuff? There are many issues. So tell me another story, Nigerians will say, because that story is not believable. And it, you requires, know, it, shows, it requires a panel? It, it, well, so, do, do, my, yes, well, whatever panel. You know, I would even want judicial panel to investigate this matter. And I, I had expected the, the query to be answered. What did the IG say concerning this matter? When this man was arrested, what was this communicated to the IG? Was he aware of the arrest of such a high-profile felon that, was, that masterminded the killing, allegedly anyway, on 25th of December? So was the IG aware? Who authorized the man to go and uh, you know, take him you know, out of custody? Because I hear he was somewhere before the police uh, commissioner himself, the, uh, the Zachary Bill, yeah. went and got him out and said, look, he wants to investigate further. And they obliged him. So who authorized it? What is operational efficiency of police in this matter? What are the lapses that have been committed? And we didn't hear anything before. You know, this matter is buried. How can you run a country this way? Nigeria is running at a loss. We are not running this country efficiently. That somebody got this man, a high felon, you know, individual, and you allow him to go. And then you place a 50 million naira uh, ransom on his head. And we're saying, we say we're broke as a nation. We don't have money. And you are, you are now <laughs> telling Nigeria that you are so rich. Police 50 money. million. 50 million naira. So I, I, I think something is wrong somewhere. We need a proper explanation. Nigerians are demanding to know what happened in this circumstance because some of us are beginning to lose confidence in this matter, in this security issue. Because if you have gotten that man and then you allow him to go, knowing, knowing how porous our borders are. So what has happened? If Nigerians don't get explanation, I think we, we must hold uh, the, this government accountable. For we now know we have a problem. Yeah. No doubt at all. The president has acknowledged it. Every Nigerian will tell you there's a problem. Yeah. And, and it appears, well... We don't seem to be dealing with that problem effectively at the mm, moment. Mm. So what exactly is the way out? Very good question. There, there are what we call short-term uh, solution and then long-term solution. But that long term should not be too long. Uh, the short-term solution is the issue of ensuring that those who have been arrested are prosecuted diligently. You don't have them arrested and then you allow them to escape. Or this issue of Libra terms, they are granting as bail terms for them. And then there is business as usual. The man self-confessed, uh, uh, you know, uh, Boko Haram spokesperson was only sentenced to two years imprisonment. And I think very soon he will come three out of prison. Years, uh, three years and all that, you know, but he won't spend more than, more than two years. Some people say that's the law you have. You're mm. a lawyer. Okay, so that's, that's the law. That's the law. Fine. Anyway. What we're saying is that with this... We, we, we are not uh, setting an example of anything that would deter even uh, future uh, recruits and all so, that so members of... So, would you, for instance... That, that be, must be proper. Would you, for instance, be advocating the death penalty? No, death penalty is no longer invoked, you know. Uh, I would rather go for life sentence, you know, and then uh, that is short term, you know, making sure that we have this nip in the board. We have all the money to get this in sorted out. After all, almost one trillion uh, uh, naira is budgeted for security anyway, this year. As, as, so as a, as a we lawyer, must put our apparatus in place to ensure that lives and property. It can be done. It can be done. America is such a big country. America is a continent and they secure their borders and secure their country. Texas is bigger than Nigeria. So why can't we secure this nation? We have all the money to make sure that everyone is serving this nation. If government say it is their responsibility to do that, it's there in the constitution to secure lives and property. And they mean it, and they put out every effort to ensure that lives and property. They can do it. It's possible. As I said earlier, the president at this point in time needs to be a lion. And I think, by the grace of God, that my prayer is that this time around, I want to see a lion. And he has really displayed it in this, uh, in this uh, fellow while. You know, he came out as a lion and ordered everyone back. So that lion spirit he has now must be displayed in every sector, especially in handling Boko Haram. Well, because you're mm. a lawyer, I have mm. to ask you this. I yeah. mean, let us look at... I have not said I'm a long term. The long term solution, you know. The long term okay. is that, uh, Deji, we need to sit down and agree on certain things about this nation. The issue, this nation has not... Well, I don't call Nigeria a nation. Nigeria is a country. We have not agreed to be a nation of one, one, one identity, of one vision, of one, you know, one integrity. We have not agreed. So we need to sit down and say, look, do we need to be together? All the things, it was an amalgamation by somebody. We need to agree, we want to be together as a nation. And then begin to pursue one ideal. If that agreement is made, then the issue is on what terms and conditions. 
Because the way we are running this government, Nigerian government, is we won't make any progress the way it is being run. Over bloated structure, issue of structural defect, issue of not even applying this re-federalism, the federal system. We're not running it the way it's being run in other countries. We have made progress. So we need to agree and then but, restructure but, but, our constitution is, to be in tandem with our ideals, with I, what we believe and all I, that. I understand Because you, without I, that way, we're just wasting I, our time. I understand more. you mm. perfectly well. Yes. The only problem here is that, uh, you know, these Boko Haram guys, for instance, have not come out to say, well, what we want is true federalism. This or that is what No, we they want. said they want Islamization. These are issues we discuss at the table. Do we want Islamization of the entire North or the entire Nigeria? If everyone agrees, then it becomes part of our constitutional decision because it's not in the constitution. OBJ was here, there was Sharia law being applied in other states, and he allowed it. It's not in the constitution because Nigeria is a secular state, even by his constitution. So, but if we agree now, we want to Islamize Nigeria or Islamize the entire North, everyone will agree. So we now know they won't be killing. They, because what they're saying is that we want Islamize and you are refusing them. And they're saying we must begin to demand and you know kill before you agree to our terms. But we must agree on a height on a round table. Well, well that is way uh, round uh, in uh, itself. After the Kano bombing, for mm. instance, uh, we understand the spokesperson of Boko Haram came out to say, well, that they were calling for the release of some of their members who were arrested in Kano and all of that, who mm. were still being detained in Kano. Yeah. They never mentioned um, you know the issue of Islamization. No, no, that, that was the initial idea. But, but yeah. okay, yeah. That's, yeah. that was the initial that, that's demand. Yeah, that's mm. just by the way. Mm. Uh, tell me how difficult it is, for instance, as a lawyer, to, to prosecute cases of you know cases of this nature. Because, for instance, um, we saw the other time the guys who were arrested in connection with uh, the bombing in Sulejas. Uh, the, the other, you know, la was it last year? Yeah, yes. last year. Mm. Yeah, they were granted bills. You know, they were granted bill, and you, you've said so that yeah. the bill was on a very liberal term. Yeah. So Tell me how difficult it is to prosecute cases like this, especially fishing for evidence to tie, you know, to tie these in individuals now to, to this bombing and all of that. Yeah, you, you, you know, the, po the police uh, has the primary responsibility of doing the investigation, getting the, 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 the accused persons to make statement, and then whether they make other what they call incriminating or confessional statement and all that, then probably having witnesses who will now help in giving evidence in order to nail them. Because, you see... Even though it is a very high, you know, big crime, you know, issue of killing murder and all that, you still require to prove your case beyond reasonable doubt. That is very hard, very, evidence. very, very, very hard evidence. It's not some. It's not here. evidence you produce. You must produce evidence that connects them to the bombing, that connects them to the killings. And you don't have that evidence. There is no connection whatsoever. Then you run into problem. Now the police now comes in to bring their technical know-how, their diligence. They are expertise in, in carrying out this investigation. I don't know how many of them are training this because this is a, a new crime. You know, we didn't envisage it. And I don't know why there were policemen that were training these bombings and in terrorism. So you need to carry out a very comprehensive investigation that must have a nexus to the accused persons. Because if you don't link it to them, you don't have problem convincing convincing the judge beyond reasonable doubt that these are the criminals. Because I, you know, you know, police of time time can come around and you know arrest even passers-by, innocent persons who we claim they were not aware they are just passing by after the incident and all that. And if we don't have concrete evidence linking them to the crime, it will be hearsay evidence. I run into problems. So you must have a concrete evidence to link them to that commission of that crime, and then the judge now will be in a position to look at that evidence and say, yes, I'm convinced that these are the ones that really committed the crime. So if you have you know lapses here and there, and the investigation has some you know what we call comma then you have problem convicting them. So it's important these things are being carried out. And I hope, I hope they are training policemen in terrorism because this is a new thing. We don't know when this is going to end. We don't know where is, how far it's going to go. So we must begin to nip it in the butt. Americans did it. 9-11 bombing. What did they do? They all, people were going to America anyhow. You don't go to America anyhow. You don't do send money anyway, anyhow to America. They stopped the fundings. They stop the fundings and all that. If we must stop this crime, we must begin to look at the technical, the operational, everything, how they come, and then infiltrate into this group. You can infiltrate into them and get all the no technical know-how and begin to nip them in the board and tackle this crime or else. It may spread. And my prayer is a prayer point. Let every home begin to pray against Boko Haram that this thing must stop because Nigeria is on the verge of disintegration. If this thing continues, I'm just telling you, my brother, all we right. must deal with it. All right. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nyeka Chobani, for your time. Well, that's it on the program. Unfortunately, I expected two other guests to join us on the program tonight. Uh, they've not been able to make it. I, I really don't understand why. But... Um, that's how far we can go on the program tonight. Well, thank you very much for watching. I am Deji Badimasi. We'll see you next week.